<clears throat> All right, how are we doing? Bad connection, good connection. What's going on? <clears throat> good, bad, what? I'm <clears throat> I'm pretty uh, severely backlit tonight because of the uh, the sunset going on there. The, the party patio, the uh, the uh, uh, iHeart Media party patio is this way. So I guess here's I guess this is the way to go, right? I just want to I, I just don't want to pick up uh, noise from the 134. As, as seen there. <clears throat> There's Hollywood Mountain. All right. I'll get, let me get comfortable. Uh, oh. All right. So the drink goes down there. Chat works if only the video worked. Yeah, what's happening with the videos? The video. Is the video uh, a giant shit show or what? Yeah, I know. It's Sunday, July 2nd. Why is there even any traffic on the 134, right? Um, so I'm on, by the way, in case, in case anyone's wondering, I'm on LTE. I'm not on the iHeartMedia Wi-Fi. Uh, because again, why should I expect a 2017 media company to have uh, dependable Wi-Fi out here on the party patio? Okay, I can't. I can't have you seeing that. And I am actually like cupping the mic there, so. What happens if I go like this? Oop. All right. I keep saying poor connection. So send send your questions while you have them. While I'm combing my hair. No, I have Sprint. You know, an AT&T allows you to use your iPhone as a hotspot. Sprint does not. So, if that was apparently that was in the the fine print, or rather, I should say the the fine Sprint. Those fuckers. I would not. I honestly, I would not have switched to Sprint if I had known this. And also, when you are actually using the phone, if when you're on the phone and your friend says, "Oh, what's the address of that place where we're meeting?" Uh, you can't. Um, you cannot uh, go to Google Maps. You can't do data while you're talking. Keltec in general, uh, th that shotgun, the KSG, excellent. Um, um, the uh, the RFB. If you can get a hold of that Keltec 308 bullpup, uh, the RFB, it's rifle forward ejecting bullpup. The Keltec RFB in 308. Uh, it is great. My it's one of my biggest regrets in the last five years was not picking up a Keltec RFB. Those things are because as a lefty, what's great about that weapon is it comes out of the box ambidextrous. Uh, the selector is ambi. The uh, ejection is forward, like uh, like the FN 2000. So uh, the ejection does not. Um, <clears throat> um, in any way affect uh, the uh, the left-handed shooter. So the Keltec RFB, if you can find one uh, that's California compliant, good fucking luck because you're not gonna. Uh, but the Keltec shotgun is uh, tremendous. It's a bullpup shotgun. Keltec is a really weird company. They're Florida-based. 
Um, they're primarily a aerospace um, uh, parts, uh, you know, subcontractor. But every once in a while, they do a run of guns, and Caltech makes a really, a really, really stripped down AR-15. I, I shouldn't even call it an AR-15, but they make a weapon called the SU-16, and it's effectively a gas-operated, a piston-operated. AR-15. It takes AR-15 magazines. Now, outside of California, you can get them with folding, collapsing stocks, or you can fire it as a as a from a pistol grip. Um, and they they were less than 500 bucks. They were amazing. I had one. I I tried to get it to fail. I could not get it to fail. Um, but that Keltec SU-15, and they do make a California compliant one. It is a really really cheap way to get into 5.56 from a semi-automatic platform. Um, and again, if you can get it out of California, uh, I think they do a magazine, I think they do a, a mag log thing here. So at which point I would say move out of California, but that Caltech SU-16 is really, really outstanding. Um, I mean, like I say, it is dirt simple. And I had the folding stock, the collapsing understock one, where the actual stock collapsed uh, underneath, and you could, you could still put a magazine in and fire it with a collapsing stock. Uh, then it had a it had a shrouded, threaded barrel. So up in up in Washington State, uh, I could put a uh, an AAC muzzle brake on it, and then fix a, a suppressor to it. And and it really was a um, a tremendous little rifle. So it keeps saying poor connection. So what are we doing? Are we still doing poor connection? Well, then I, you know, then I don't know how you would get it in California. Um, I know that I've seen them at gun shows, and I've seen them at gun shops, but um, surely the uh, the shotgun has some modification where it cannot take 10 rounds. Uh, unless the issue, because here's the thing, it has a pistol grip, right? Um, but it does not have a detachable magazine. And so I don't know what the California law is there, but it doesn't have a detachable mag. You know, the KSG has, what, it has two 10-round tubes, right? Yeah, so I bet you that might be the reason that um, it might be California compliant. But man, I gotta tell you, um, you know, we were rocking the Mossberg 500s in Baghdad, and I know that um, Special Forces still to this day use a, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, uh, you know, a standard you know, butt stock with a pistol grip pump or automatic shotgun. The thing about that Keltec is the form factor is so tight. It's perfect for, uh, you know, sling, slinging on your back and then um, putting your primary weapon to your side and bringing up that shotgun if you need breaching rounds or whatever. Um, and so I would assume by this point that local forces have used local funds, like First Special Forces Group or Delta Force or those guys have probably used local local funds to uh, to pick those up. But yeah, I so that the rifle forward ejecting bullpup, the RFB, um, a tremendous rifle. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what I'm saying about the KSG. It's form factor. It's so tight. It's so small that it's almost like it was uh, purpose built for for cops, uh, for SWAT, or for Delta Force, for people who clear rooms. Um, because when infantry clear rooms, we generally do it with grenades. You know, cops can't do that. Uh, and Delta Force, if they're clearing a, a building, they're probably freeing hostages. When you can't do that with frags. When the infantry are clearing a building, we have the luxury of, of going, frag out, boop, throw it in the room, uh, let it blow, and then go in and hose everybody. You know, Delta Force can't do that. FBI, HRT can't do that either. 
So yeah, a, uh, a shotgun that you could sling over your back and then bring it to bear with, with minimal hoo-ha on your own personal gear would be uh, incredible. Um, yeah, yeah, right? RPGs and frags. Um, they get their info, like civil military and then flight radar 24 and all that. The reason that they can track in real time or near real time aircraft above us um, is because of the ADSB and the um, uh, and uh, the other uh, IFF systems. ADSB is the real time satellite uplink where if you go on flight radar 24 you see that overwhelmingly uh, all non-American commercial carriers uh, have ADSB. You go through Europe and Africa and um, and you can get a real-time track of a plane being you know flying across Africa and over the continental US uh, a lot of American domestic carriers they don't have that instant ADSB system they have the laggy IFF system which is usually like 30 seconds to a minute behind so you can see like somebody will take off from Burbank Airport so you can see it with your eyeballs and if you check flight radar 24 uh, or or uh, any of those um, you'll see that the track is like a minute behind where your eyeballs are you see the real plane in real time but flight radar will be like a minute behind it's just taking off from Burbank when it's actually going that way the other system ADSB is an actual real-time constant update GPS system and at most there's like a half second uh, lag between the the um Oh, look at that look at that reflection wow uh, between the um, the real flight and the uh, connect and the uh, data well that's that's freaky bro because look, look what it's doing Woo. Pretty good, huh? <clears throat> that was that was my dachshund. Here, let me do my border collie. That's that's my border collie. Look at that. Whoa! Backlight. Uh, now it's gone. Um, all right. I actually have to prepare for Super Hyper Local Sunday. Uh, we're gonna go heavy on this Armenian uh, dude. Um, you know what? Because the check keeps clearing, and because I work cheap. You mean why am I on radio versus TV? You know what? We might be taking care of that really soon. Though I'm I'm a, kind of a fat, ugly fucker, so um, you know I might ask, why are you watching this live YouTube stream? See what I did? Oh, hey, look at that! You two thought of the same punchline. Oh my God! You should you should sit on each other's faces. That would be cute. Wet, wet, wet. Um, I'm on Kennedy on Wednesday. I'm filling in for John and Ken on Monday and Tuesday. We're going to talk to Dale Die on Tuesday or or Monday. Um, he is trying to Indiegogo uh, his film project. He has a uh, Dale Dye has a phenomenal film project that he's been working on for about five or six years. Um, 
about a uh, really significant battle that the 82nd Airborne were involved in right after D-Day. Uh, and he, uh, of course, Dale Dye has all the connections to the actors and the the, the kit, the equipment, all that. And he's, he's trying to fund this thing, and so we're going to do that for him. Uh, all right, um, I'm going to go downstairs and start printing out stuff.